The only thing needed for evil to triumph is for good people to do nothing. Senator Elizabeth Warren recently wrote about her visit. She was able to speak to nine detained mothers. Each mother told a story about crossing the border, about being taken to a processing center, and they told the point that they were separated from their child or children. In every single case, the government lied to them about where their children were being taken. In every case except one, no mother had spoken to her child in the day since the separation. And in every case, no mother even knew where her child was. This makes me so angry. My prayers are for those who come across the border with their families that are being separated their children been traumatized. And unfortunately, the trauma is also going among my family. If anyone that I can hear me today can do something about it, the officials can do something about it, please do it. I would like to remain with my family. I would like not to live in fear anymore. I would like to have my children a father image to teach the values of a family the values to remain together and are being separated. Enough with separating families and enough with so much pain. It was already enough with all the lies they've told about us. We are not criminals. We are not rapists. If you are here, I believe you are what we would call in my tradition, a bodhisattva. Do you know what a bodhisattva is? The Beastie Boys wrote a, wrote a song, check out the lyrics, you'll get it. But a Bodhisattva is one whose path of awakening is through serving others. It's one whose path of awakening is the heart that breaks when we witness what we are witnessing in this country. The Bodhisattva is a spiritual warrior whose weapons are love whose fury is compassion, whose compassion is so big that it is limitless. It is big enough to include everyone, particularly those who are afflicted, we call this an illness, with the mind of hatred, the mind, the mind of delusion, the mind of separating, making self and other, making enemy and friend, making right and wrong. That mind, with that much compassion, that heart, that mind is so sharp that it understands what the cause of happiness and harmony and peace is, and what the cause of suffering is. And we are seeing suffering, and it is the mind of hatred. It is the heart that is closed, that is disconnected from its own warmth. And while we pray and we take action, and we stand in solidarity for these families, we cannot forget our elected officials. If you didn't vote for them, and that's your stance, they're still ours. They still belong to us. And Mother, Mother Teresa says, if we don't have peace, it's because we've forgotten we belong to each other. I just want to tell you, I'm back from three days in Washington. It is so good to be home. They are completely messed up there. You knew that, right? But they're going to say, where were you in 2018? You were here. And you were saying, not on our watch, here in Rochester. I just want to remind you, we have crisis nurseries. We take care of babies. We take care of each other. And we are so deeply grateful to be a sanctuary city. They cannot stop us. We know. We know. because I run shelters, as you know, and I look out and I love so many of you. This is our city.
city. We will be a sanctuary city. And on behalf of our mayor, who could not be with us today, she welcomes you all to Washington Square Park, which is the site always of our loud voices. At the Center for Youth, we have a group of kids, and they call themselves Say It Loud. And we're going to say it loud. This year, Rochester celebrates the 20th, 200th year of Frederick Douglass, our city's favorite son, who fought against injustice, just as you are fighting against injustice today. I'm sorry I can't be with you, says our mayor, but I stand with you in spirit, and I'm so happy to be with you in person. You know, you can't trust flight, so last night I wasn't so sure, but I'm so happy. Lovely shares this, and I add my thoughts. We can't think of anything worse than a parent that doesn't know where their child is or will be reunited, not to be able to offer comfort or reassurance to my child. Few things are more un-American than this, and now, thanks to the Supreme Court, the Trump administration is again discriminating against Muslim families as well. To quote our own beloved son, Frederick Douglass, a smile or a tear has no nationality. Joy and sorrow speak alike to all nations, and they, above all the confusion of tongues, proclaim the brotherhood of man, and I'm going to add woman, just by the way, uh, and take heart because America once again is rising up against injustice. Our injustice, my injustice, the injustice of our whole city government has helped put a stop to inhumane family separation, but at our policy, but policies of the Southern Board have not made a difference. We must unite. We can make a difference. We are not done yet. We are a sanctuary city. Never. Hello, everyone. My name is Joanna. I'm a student from SUNY Geneseo, and I'm a member of the Student Coalition for Migrant Workers at SUNY Geneseo. The Alianza Agricola, the Agriculture Alliance, is a group led by and comprised of immigrant farm workers in western and central New York. The group came together to create a better future here in New York for immigrant farm worker families and communities. Members engage in educating the community about immigrant rights issues and are currently focused on an effort to win driver's licenses for undocumented immigrants in New York as part of the statewide Green Light Driving Together campaign. I will be reading to you all a letter written by members of the Alianza that they have prepared. Good afternoon to all of you who are here. Thank you for your support, and I hope you good people do not mind that this message is addressed to those who do not love us. Alianza Agricola, the Agricultural Alliance, is a group of immigrant workers that was created with the aim of fighting for our rights and ending the injustices that we face every day because we came here, as some say, illegally. We are struggling to obtain driver's licenses for all immigrants, regardless of their legal status, without the need to provide a social security number. This will allow us to lead a normal life without fear of driving on the streets, without fear of being stopped by the police, without fear of being detained and separated from our children. A license is crucial for us because we have needs like everyone else. We need to go to the store to buy food, we need to go to doctor's appointments, to take our children to school, to go to work, and even just to not feel excluded from society, the society that we contribute to so much through our work. Today, we are raising our voices and demanding that the government stop this policy of separating families and locking children in cages, causing great psychological damage to children and their families. It is unbelievable that the president who represents this country would act in such a cruel and inhumane fashion carried away by the hatred he has for immigrants. Everything he is doing is unfair. He sees us as animals because of the color of our skin. He persecutes us as if we were criminals when all we want to do is work, to give a better life to our children, to our family members who remain in our countries of origin. The United States is a country of immigrants. And it is not fair that they persecute us and want to take us from this land. We have indigenous blood. We belong here. We are America. You invaded our land, and now you want to throw us out because you feel superior because you're white. We are all America, and we must be equal. We deserve to be free and must end racism and discrimination towards different groups and races. No one on this earth is worth more than anyone else. Jesus said, 
love your neighbor as you love yourself. Seven simple words to live by that I think all of us share without regard to our religious background this afternoon. We love our neighbors and our friends, but it must never stop there. The Bible is filled with teachings, instructions, prophecies, stories, and songs that urge us to keep expanding the circle of that love. And so, verse after verse, story after story, strangers, refugees, sojourners, exiles, aliens, the marginalized, the nameless, the forgotten, the lost, even the enemies, are not only included in God's love, but in every one of the stories, it's made clear that you will most likely find God when you are looking in the eyes of those exact persons. And today, especially as we look into the eyes of children who have been separated from their families by a truly odious policy. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Seven simple words to live by. But it seems that in practice, these words are very difficult for our country because we stumble over them over and over again, developing self-serving interpretations of the scripture that reduce them to mean love only those who are like you. A revision that in effect pushes everybody else away. And instead of a generous interpretation, many have added footnotes and qualifications to Jesus' words, diluting their power, stunting their vision, limiting their application, and undermining the integrity of religious faith. I'm the pastor of a small Presbyterian church in a rural county. Can you guess that it's conservative territory? <laughs> and it's no secret that the people who inhabit the towns close to where I work have voted for certain policies and personalities lately. My approach is not to debate policy but to keep asking the question, who are our neighbors? People who live in our rural communities, whether they have documents or not, whether they speak English or not, whether they have families and children or not, they are our neighbors. Their work benefits the entire community and puts food on many tables, including yours. I like to think there's a small revolution brewing out that way where I work. In November, my church had a dinner for neighbors, 80 people, farm workers, and their allies. What a beautiful meal it was. People swapping stories and hopes and dreams, and the best part, neighbors meeting neighbors. No longer invisible to ourselves, we are neighbors. Today, as you hear all of our speakers, our neighbors are living in fear and distress. And here is the good news. We are responding as neighbors should. <laughs> Defending our neighbors and our families. Thank you.
We're in a political moment where people's right to family and community are being systematically attacked by our immigration system. Immigration and Customs Enforcement, ICE, partners with Border Patrol and local law enforcement to separate families every day across the country from the southern border to our own local region. Organizing with immigrant workers in our local dairy industry, we see young Mexican and Central American men fleeing poverty, violence, and joblessness. These men, often migrating alone, are confined to the rural farms on which they live and work 12 hours a day, six to seven days a week, without basic labor protections, in substandard housing, politically denied a driver's license by our governor, and without access to the surrounding area. In unnatural communities, people live without enrichment, access to elders, and multi-generational communities, or food security. This systematic crisis is a byproduct of the United States' blatant disrespect and disregard of immigrant lives. For me, fighting alongside immigrant communities means fighting for people's right to live in healthy and secure and holistic communities, free from fear and the threat of deportation. Let's send a strong message to our leaders that we believe that families belong together and we need justice.